The project we've got going here is one of the most typical retaining wall projects. Now this house is built on a walkout lot, so there's a good sized hill over on this side of the house. Well, this is usually pretty much wasted space. It's too steep to plant anything, it's kind of hard to mow around, so we've got a good solution. We'll put in three different terraces. It'll create some flat areas where we can plant some flowers and shrubs, and it'll also hide the air conditioner compressor here. The walls are going to have nine rows showing a four inch block, a total of three feet for each wall. And when you start working on walls that high, you need to do a little more preparation. What we've done is dig down about six inches below where we want the wall to start, and we've put in some fill. Then we compact the fill with a hand tamper. Now, this tool does a little larger area than the piece of 4x4 that we used on our first project. We're filling this area in with sand. We had a truck dump off about three yards up in the driveway. We're just bringing it down here with wheelbarrows. Now, we'll check to see how we're doing. Hey, Suzanne, we need a little bit over here in this, in this corner. Okay. Throw that in. I'll tap that down a little bit. You want to check this? You ready? That looks pretty good. All right, that looks good. Well, we've got the base all prepared. It's level all along, and we've set it low enough so that the first row will pretty much be sunk below the ground level in the front. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want to bury the bottom row about one inch for every eight inches of wall height above the ground. We're pretty close to that with 36 inches above the ground and four inches below. For this wall, we need a little bit larger block. This one weighs about 45 pounds, and instead of a flange, it has these two little holes for pins that will interlock with the blocks above it. Ready to go? All set. The first part of this wall is straight, and it'll curve around and die into the hill. Okay, here's the second one. All right, now we strung a building line to make sure that we're installing the first few blocks here perfectly straight. You want to check them for level? Yeah. Hmm, needs to come down a little bit on this side. All right. Now, you could lift the block up and dig sand off from underneath, but sometimes it's just easier to beat it with a mallet. Okay, a tiny bit more on this one. Okay, try that. Okay, that looks good. Looks good. All right, we've laid out the bottom course for the whole wall here, including the part of the wall that dies in the hillside. Now, as we said, these blocks have holes for fiberglass pins to lock them to the row above them. We want to put the pins in now so we don't get any dirt in the holes when we backfill. Now we're backfilling using river rock, and we're placing the rock behind the blocks and the little areas in between them. Once the areas are filled up, we scrape off the tops to get ready for the next row. And like our first project, you want to sweep the top of the blocks before you put on the next row. And the blocks have these little holes on the bottom fit right over the top of our pins. When you stack the blocks, you pull the top block forward and everything gets snug together. Now we want our second row to die into the hillside here. So we've scooped out this area, added some fill back in, brought up to the level of the last block on our first row. We start setting the blocks for the second row until the natural grade of the hillside starts to bury them. Okay. Now, with our running bond pattern, we need half a block up against the house. Now, one way of getting this is using a cold chisel and a fist maul. So, what we've done here is just scored this all the way around the outside, as you can see. We put it on the edge here, and we break it. You should get a pretty clean break, but you might have to clean it up just a little bit. From here on out, we follow the same steps for each row. 
Once the blocks are in place, we insert the pins. Then we fill around the blocks with gravel. Clean off the tops of the blocks and put on the next course. We've got six courses total, and this will take a couple of hours. Now, there are a couple of things we should tell you that we've done on the wall here. The top blocks are called cap blocks. They don't have the little holes for the pin sticking out the top. You don't want to see that on your top row. And remember, the blocks are laid out in a running bond pattern. Now, this means that the joints are not lined up row after row, but they're staggered. Also, there are some adjustments you have to make when working with curved sections. At the bottom of the wall, we have to leave a space between the blocks. But as we move up the wall, the space narrows. At the top, we might even have to chip up part of the block to get it to fit. Well, that's because the blocks tend to get squeezed together on a curve as they step back. So far, the wall's taken about a full day. Well, we'll come back tomorrow, and hopefully we should be able to get the other two levels done. I'll get this stuff raked up here. Okay, I'll get this one in here. Now, it's taken us a couple days to get to this point. And we're not going to kid you, this is a lot of work. Yeah, the block's heavy, the river rock's heavy, the sand's heavy, the dirt's heavy, even the tamper gets heavy after a while. But we did finish it in a weekend, and now we're just putting in a finishing touch. Okay, that one's all set here. I'm putting some construction adhesive to hold down the top blocks. This is just a little insurance. The fill behind the top row here will push it forward on the fiberglass pins, but there's nothing but the weight of the block holding it down. The adhesive helps hold it down. It makes it a little bit less likely it'll be knocked out of position. Now again, once we're done with this terracing project, 